Back in February of this year, Pokemon had a direct where they told us we will finally be getting Generation 9 by the end of this year. Now, I know like many of you, I've had a lot of thoughts running through my head as to what we could get, what my expectations are, what my hopes are. So today I wanted to make a quick video of more of an editorial style to share with you guys some of those thoughts that I have. First and most importantly, let's talk about how this is going to be the first ever open world Pokemon game. Now, what I'm hoping for in this is that they lean into more of a lack of linearity with this, which would mean we can go any town we want, any battle we want, and have kind of an overarching story that connects the whole thing, similar to how Breath of the Wild operates open world. If they do stick with traditional gym battles and the gym system, I hope they allow you to fight the gyms in any order that you want. The way they could easily do this is have each gym leader assess how many badges you already have, and then they pick a team according to what level you're at. So, using Kanto as an example, if you were to fight Brock, if he was the first gym leader, he would still have his Geodude and Onyx, but if you were to fight him later on, he would have a Golem, maybe a Rhydon, a, a more complex team that scales to your level. Now, when it comes to wild Pokemon in an open world game, I hope they allow you to catch any species you want from the start of the game. I know this could lead to some issues with being overpowered or overleveled, but one of my biggest gripes with Pokemon games in the past is the fact that you're limited to build your team with what's around you and you want to change it as you keep going. It would be nice if from the start of the game for once you can choose any species you want and then build your team accordingly. I don't think it would have too many adverse effects on the difficulty of the game, as long as legendaries were still locked to a later point in the game of course. But maybe just have the levels kind of scale as you progress. I'm sure there's a way they can do that. We saw in the Isle of Armor and Crown Tundra DLC, they did something very similar to that. But most importantly, I just hope that we have full map accessibility from the jump. I really like the Alola games, but one of my least favorite parts of them is the fact that when you get to a new area, they have artificial roadblocks that kind of lock you in from going to specific places. Like, oh, there's a herd of Tauros over there, or oh, this guy's having a photo shoot, you can't go this way yet. It would be really nice if whatever this new region is, we can explore it without limits from the start. Maybe still have some areas that are unlocked later in the game with more powerful Pokemon or legendaries or story elements, but to have a vast majority of the region available from the start would lead to such an interesting and open experience. Speaking of which, let's talk about the specific region itself. Now we know from the early footage it's going to be based on the Spain, Portugal area of Europe. I really hope that whatever they do, they lean into the culture and lore of those areas and design Pokemon that feel like they fit into that region. I think one of the things that later Pokemon games have done a lot better than the early Pokemon games did is they have Pokemon that feel like they make sense to live in that region. I think the first few generations were more concerned with just designing Pokemon in general and establishing what the franchise is, but now if you look at a region like Alola or even Kalos, those Pokemon that were introduced in those games feel like they're very at home in that region. I hope they continue that trend in this new game as well. Another thing that I really hope they do is establish a deep lore for the region. I think this part of the world has such a deep culture that needs to be explored, and I think Pokemon games have gotten a lot better with that over the last few generations, instead of just kind of burying it and making it a secondary part of the story. Building off that, let's talk about what I want to see in the actual story of this game. Now recently Pokemon has kind of got into a trend of every game needs some sort of doomsday scenario with an evil team trying to awaken an ancient Pokemon that used to wreak havoc and has been locked away and honestly I hope they kind of steer away from that. I want to see them experiment with stories that aren't the same formula that they've been telling for the past five or six generations. I would love to see some sort of evil team that plays into the gym challenge a bit more instead of having these two seemingly separate things going on at the same time. I don't know. That, that was one of my bigger problems with Sword and Shield, was that you had the big Doomsday scenario going on in the background, but it's like, oh, don't worry about that. Just focus on doing your gym challenge. Like, no, I kind of would like if the story all, like, connected to itself a little more. I think that would make for a much more interesting and well-rounded game. And even if they don't decide to put an evil team in there, I hope whatever the antagonizing force is... I hope that it fits into the gym challenge and into the linear storyline that you're getting in that game. Now, before I get into specific Pokemon design things and battle mechanics I want to see, I do want to talk about the difficulty of the game as well. I have gone on record many, many, many times saying that I think X and Y are way too easy. And that's because the game just gives you too many free encounters, Megas are very overpowered, and the gym leaders don't actually use the Mega Pokemon in their battles. 
I think Sun and Moon and Sword and Shield did a better job of implementing these battle mechanics and having the boss battles, whether they be totems or gym leaders, use the same mechanics you do so they feel a little more evenly matched. But I think Pokemon can still do more to up the difficulty without making it too hard for newer players. One way that I think they could do this is to lean into the open world side of things and have more optional side missions that could have increased difficulty. Maybe have these be the way to get some more powerful Pokemon that you can use for the gym challenge or something like that. But have them be difficult battles, not just fight this guy, go here, drop this off. Maybe one way they could make these battles more difficult is if they have them be a little more restrictive. Like you have to fight a team of grass types with only water types, or you can't use a specific type of Pokemon, or you have to catch a specific Pokemon. Like there's so many ways that they could do this. I really hope they kind of lead into the more open world thing and have side missions that challenge the players more. That way, if you are a newer player and you find that to be too difficult, you don't have to do it to beat the game. Also, I really, really, really hope they go back to rivals that tend to push you more. I think Sword and Shield and Sun and Moon did an okay job with this. I don't really hate Hop or How, and I think they both have interesting backstories and reasons for what they do. But my god, X and Y had too many friggin' friendly rivals, and too many forced battles, and oh, it just it just felt like too much when you were playing the game. I hope the rival still plays a big part in the story and the lore of the game, but I hope that they're not intrusive. Now let's talk about the most important part of a Pokemon game, the actual Pokemon. Now we already know what the base forms of the starters are gonna look like, and yes, they are all very, very cute. But to me personally, what's more important is what they evolve into. I really hope that the starters all have good dual typings that balance each other out. I think Gen 4 did a very good job of this to give them all dual types that allow them to hit each other for at least neutral stab damage or super effective stab damage going both ways. I hope they continue this trend and have an interesting type triangle that allows the starters to be a little more diverse than what they have been in the past. I would also love to see them go with newer secondary typings, maybe ones that we haven't seen as often before. For the love of God, please don't give us another firefighting starter. We have too many of those as is. I also hope that they go back to a more animalistic style with the starters as well, instead of leaning more into the humanoid side of things. I know a lot of people have touched on this, and it's a big bone of contention for a lot of people. But the fact that every past generation for the last few of them has had very humanoid-like starters that are, you know, bipedal and don't really fit what they started as, I think that needs to be changed. You look at the early designs of Pokemon like Charizard, Blastoise, Venusaur, they feel different than the newer starters do. I hope they find a way to go back to that design philosophy. But maybe more important than starter Pokemon are the legendary Pokemon that are in the game. I really hope that they give us more than three in the base game. I think Sword and Shield felt incomplete because you couldn't get any more legendaries until the DLC came out. I'd like to see a region that has a lot of lore tied into these legendaries and has some that maybe you get in the post game, maybe towards the end of the game you encounter them, but I want to see more than just the ones that play a main role in the story. Also, tying back to my whole thing about the story, I really hope we don't just get another one where it's an evil team trying to have a doomsday scenario with a legendary Pokemon. I'd like to see legendary Pokemon that are more lore-based or tied into the specifics of the region, or maybe ones that people already knew about, similar to what they did in Sun and Moon with the Tapus, but something that allows us to not have to save the world using this Pokemon or stop this Pokemon from destroying the world. It's been done before, we've seen it, it's a good storyline, but they gotta go with something a little different here. Also, I'd love to see the return of Legendary Trios again. I feel like it's been a few generations since we got a new one. If I remember correctly, Gen 5 was the last time we got a new Legendary Trio. But the Legendary Trios were such a big part of Pokemon design in the past, I'd like to see them do something new with this region. Now, for pseudo-legendaries, I really hope they do something that's not a dragon type. I don't know why, but for almost every single generation, Pokemon has been stuck to the idea that these powerful, non-legendary Pokemon need to have the dragon type on them. They really don't. You could really make any type of Pokemon a pseudo-legendary as long as you give it a good design, good stats, maybe a good ability, a good move pool, but don't make it a dragon. I would also like to see the return of multiple pseudo-legendary lines, similar to what they did in Gen 3, but that's more secondary to the whole dragon thing. Now, a newer trend in Pokemon that I really like is the introduction of regional forms. Starting with Gen 7 and now in Gen 8, and even in the spin-off games like Legends, we've been seeing new designs of older Pokemon. I really, really hope that they continue doing that, and I think they will, so I'm not as concerned with this one. One idea that I've had, though, for a few games that I hope they do is give us a new cast form. 
Now, I know Cast Form isn't the most popular Pokemon in the world, but I think they could do something very interesting with it if they had it changed based on the terrain instead of the weather. I also hope that they would change the stats of it a little bit, make it a little more either offensive or defensive instead of just a flat, well-rounded Pokemon, but I'd like to see them do something like that. Finally, let's talk about the battle mechanics in this game. Now, for the last three generations, Pokemon has given us some big, flashy new battle mechanic, whether it was Megas, Z-Moves, or Dynamaxing. I almost hope they go with something a little more subdued here than what they've done the last few gens. One idea that I had that I don't think they'll do but could be pretty interesting is maybe allow Pokemon to have multiple abilities if they're holding a certain item. Like, for instance, if a Pokemon has access to a hidden ability, maybe have them get that on top of their base form ability to have that Pokemon do multiple things. I think that would still allow for an interesting mechanic into the game, but have it be more subtle and more technical than the past ones have been. Also, and I don't think this one's going to happen, I would love to see the return of Mega Pokemon. I know a lot of people have talked about this, but I'm really surprised that they only stuck with Megas for one generation when they could have been giving us new designs of so many more Pokemon than what we got. Megas really were my favorite gimmick that they've introduced recently, and to see it just given up on so quickly, I hope they do something with it. Not that I'm expecting them to. It seems like Pokemon would rather move forward than acknowledge these older ones, but I don't think newer is always better. But those are just my initial thoughts on what I want to see in Scarlet and Violet. What are yours? Please leave them in the comments if you have anything or if you have thoughts on what I said. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Also, let me know what you guys think of this more open editorial style of video. I wanted to try something a little different, and this was kind of floating around in my brain for a bit. So I hope you enjoyed it. Either way, guys, thank you so much for watching. Till next time, my friends, stay safe out there, be nice to each other, and I'll catch you on the next one. Have a great day, and take care.